What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Finder K and today I'm bringing you guys a season six so lane tier list. I haven't done a tier list for so lane in quite some time and just a general tier list in quite some time and uh, SPL is starting up and some meta shifts have happened and I just wanted to go ahead and make it a tier list. Also uh, we hit our 400 sub goal on stream and I promised that I would do a tier list for so lane once we hit that. So here it is. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. Um, it's going to be mainly uh, for ranked, a little bit of competitive influence in this, but there's definitely some different um, differences between competitive and ranked. So it's going to be mainly for ranked, but we're going to go right through it. Um, I'm not going to do every god just because, you know, most gods aren't viable in solo. Um, but I will do even the gods that aren't that viable right now, but that you have seen in the past possibly. And just stuff like that. Generally just things that could work, but you just don't see too often. So starting off with Achilles, I'm going to put Achilles in S. Um, Achilles is just a guy that always wins lane pretty much. He doesn't really have any bad matchups. The um, only really bad matchup that he has where he might lose it is like um, Arthur, but Arthur kind of just beats everybody. Um, but other than that, he just has lanes that he can stall in and maybe not punish too hard like some of the low pressure guardians and stuff like that can do decent into him. But pretty much every matchup he has, he uh, wins because he's kind of broken. So, and the MC aren't really viable. Aposh, definitely seen in the past, so I'll go ahead and throw him in here. Uh, I'll throw Aposh in B. He's really good with like a bruiser build, and he's very good counter to healers. So if healers ever become meta in solo, then you might be seeing Aposh a little bit more. Um, and he does well with, like I said, with like a bruiser build with like Spear of the Magus, Chove Iso as your only damage items, and the rest is like CDR and da uh, defense. Pretty good, but he's just definitely down here because he doesn't really have good initiation. He has no CC apart from the stun if they heal. Um, so he's really just used as a counter. Amaterasu is up next. I'm going to throw Ama in just A. Ama is one of the just... Um, one of the most balanced gods in the game in my opinion uh, at least for solo lane um, she doesn't have the greatest laning phase but her late game is where she shines a lot um, she has good objective burn as far as like rank goes if you don't know how to play Amaterasu to her like full potential then you can get punished a lot in lane so you gotta be really careful um, but that's why she's an A because she can be punished and she has a lot of counters um, a lot of bullies mess with her and kind of uh, can you know, instantly win, the, win you the game if you bully her too much. Um, but she does have that strong late game, so that's why I think she's one of the more balanced gods in the game. Um, Nubis, I'll throw Alquang in here. I think Alquang's probably around B+, plus, maybe um, A. His new passive is really nice and solo, just has a ton of sustain in it, and the fact that you go, like, Warrior's Blessing on him, if, you, if you're into that, you can go Warrior's Blessing. And then uh, Warrior's Blessing plus his passive, you just have a crazy amount of sustain. And once you get that Warrior's Blessing fully stacked, it gives you a lot of defense, you know, 15 of each protection plus the health and the damage reduction. It allows you to go maybe more damage in your build if you want to, like a Dynasty Play Helm, or possibly even like the standard, like Bancroft's on him. Um, and he's really good at executing tanks, so that's part of the reason he's so good in solo. Loki is SS+. Plus. <laughs> That's what I do see. Thank you for the nine months, man, of Twitch Prime. Welcome back. And uh, Loki, no, I'm not even going to put Loki in this list, dude. I hate Loki. Um, Afro, we'll throw down in probably like B or B+. plus. She's probably in between a little bit. Um, you can still get to late game on a lot of these solo laners because this, the season is very similar. The only thing that's really different is the totem. Um, but you definitely can get to late game pretty easily still. So Afro is still viable in the solo lane. If you can't get to late game, then she's never really going to be viable. Um, but yeah, she you can still definitely do well with her. Uh, you just need to, how to, need to know how to survive the laning phase and not get, get too far behind, especially against these like higher pressure gods that you'll uh, be seeing that are trying to get totem and stuff like that. So Afro probably around B, maybe in between B and B+. Plus. Uh, Arachne, I think Arachne is like kind of viable in solo, so I'll just throw her in C. She's probably one of the more worst gods just because she doesn't have a ton of CC. She's all single target. Um, wing blade counters are really hard. Sprint counters are really hard. Um... She does have a little bit of viability just because she has some crazy cheese starts with her, her webs and stuff that she can do. And she could possibly invade and stuff like that. So you can be looking for cheese strats with her. Um, but once it gets to late game, Arachne Solo is probably one of the more worst gods in the game because no initiation, no CC, and not a lot of damage. And it's all single target. Um, Ares, I'm going to throw in a B plus. You can definitely, um, if you're a good Ares player, you can get out of the laning phase with him. His laning phase is a little bit rough just because of the lack of clear, but he doesn't have a ton of damage. And if you're picking him into a counter matchup where you're going to be making really good use of the cripple and you're going to be hard countering a guy that really relies on it either for clear or just for surviving, um, even maybe something like King Arthur since he has so many movement abilities, then um, he gets a lot he gets a lot better. So if he's in a counter matchup, you might even see him more at A, A+. Plus. But um, if you know how to play Ares in a ranked game, and you want to counterpick them because they're relying on their uh, their dashes and stuff like that, then he's definitely um, a decent pick. I missed you, bro. 
Um, next up is Ardio. Ardio is kind of the same as uh, Ares. I'm gonna throw him in, or her in A plus just because her she's basically a better Ares because she counters people through her cripple, but she actually has a good laning phase and can beat a lot of uh, matchups. Pretty much most match matchups just because he has she has so much sustain and her build path is so easy. You just get full CDR and you're gonna be uh, not only spamming your ability so much, kind of just like face rolling your keyboard, but uh, you're gonna be sustaining a ton. Like I said, yo Christian, thanks for three months of Twitch Prime as well, bro. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, Ardio is a little bit A plus, um, possibly even like S, just because her for rank games she just can't lose matchups really. So uh, she does have no CC immunity, so you got to be on the lookout for that. Um, Athena, I'll put Athena in like B or maybe in B plus, um, just because it's ranked and ranked. You're not communicating as much as you are in competitive, so you're not really making good use of the ult uh, like you would. Uh, but she's still a good god, and you can definitely hard carry a game from solo as Athena just because you can proxy so much and rotate to early team fights where the other solo laner probably won't be rotating. Um, that's the the one benefit with her. So um, if you're able to do that, then maybe she goes up a little bit. Um, if you're able to get really early proxies off and then rotating team fights and impacting the game, then she might go, uh, be more like B+, but it is ranked, so maybe you should just pick a god that can win lane hard because Athena can't really win lane. Um, a Willix, I'm going to put in B+. You see Deathwalker playing this a lot on stream. She's definitely fun to play in solo, um, but she gets hard countered by cripples. Uh, all of her stuff is single target as well. She does have a pretty good initiation, especially if you go blink on her, um, but even then, um, she can just do a lot of damage to, to one person, but like I said, it's just one person, so a lot of time you'd rather have uh, things with AoE, like um, all the other guys that you're seeing higher up on the list usually have AoE besides like uh, like Alquang, so... Um, Definitely a fun god, though, to play. Uh, throw Bacchus in about A. Ever since his buffs, Bacchus has been pretty good. Um, he's just not one of those gods that you really have to know how to survive the laning phase with because you will lose a lot of gold just because your clear and poke potential isn't that great. Um, after his buffs, they're pretty decent because you get 30 magical power level 1 and you get a stun plus um, or a knockout plus a slow if you level your your 2 at level 1. So you definitely do have like it's still a pretty good early game, but um, he just has a lot of trouble like clearing the lane when um, he doesn't have CDR and stuff just because... One of the main problems with a lot of guardians is that once the brute minions start coming, the ways with the brute minions, they have to sit there and auto the brute minions forever, and it just takes so long to clear. But um, he can definitely hard carry out a solo, one of the higher damaging guardians. Um, Baka, I'll throw in here. Baka's probably around B. Yo, I had you like subs, so I got <laughs> you a sub for your sub, so your sub can sub sub. <laughs> Thanks for the 18 months, J Mac. Welcome back, bro. Um, Baka, I'll throw in B. Um, because his name starts with B, and that's pretty much it. Um, Baron, same reason. His name starts with B, and I'll throw him in B. No, I'm just kidding. I'll throw Baron in B+. Baron's dropped off a, a good bit. He's been nerfed a whole lot. A lot of his damage has dropped off because of the nerfs, um, because until you build him more bruiser and more tanky, so if you're not going straight into those scaling items, then um, you're going to be losing a lot of damage just because they've nerfed it so much. But he's still definitely a good god. Um, he's really good at just singling out one person, especially a character that can't get out of his ult. Um, he still does a ton amount of, a ton of damage, and if you build correctly um, with some bruiser items like Dicey Plate Helm, possibly like Poison and stuff like that, you're still going to be doing quite a bit of damage. So definitely still a decent god, but um, there's just so many matchups right now that are good into him, such as Achilles, Ardeo, um, King Arthur, who's like the top pick right now. All these gods can easily get out of his ult, so uh, as far as the lane goes, it's still pretty rough. Um, Seb Kyle, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub, man. Appreciate it, bro. Uh, Bologna, I'll throw in A+. Plus. Um, with Berserker's shield, the fact that she wins a lot of lanes and always outclears her uh, enemy soul laner, she can get totem pretty much on cooldown, so she can really get a, a nice gold lead going for her team. Um, she will always have pressure and rank pretty much, unless you're uh, getting owned for whatever reason, which you probably shouldn't be. Our only counter matchups are gods that are usually low pressure, like Sobek, Kuzumbo, um, stuff like Gebs, things that can interrupt her too, but even then she's pretty much still wins the lane because she's outclearing them to begin with. So as long as you're making use of that pressure, uh, below is going to be probably around A+. Plus. Use thanks for gifting a sub to Ben Twig. Welcome, Twig. Okay, I need to I need to run through this. My my YouTube subs are gonna annoy, gonna get annoyed that I'm thanking every <laughs> every sub, but uh, um, who cares? Bracken up next. Um, Bracken I think is a little bit underrated right now. I'm gonna throw him in B plus. Um, he still has the benefit that he always has the fact that he can blink on a backline and instantly kill someone. Um, problem is the fact that he has no CC immunity is really rough. Um, for one, and um. All of his stuff is single target for the most part, apart from, you know, obviously his uh, tremors that he can tremor people. But uh, most of the better characters, at least the guardians that you see being played in solo and coming to team fights, they're like they have like two or three abilities that can affect like a ton of people, such as like Bacchus Ult plus his burp, and it's not going to hit many people. Um, Terror Root uh, into like ultimate is like affecting a lot of people. So 
Um, he still definitely can hit multiple people with his abilities, but um, you're usually just trying to instantly blow up one person in the team fight, and that's pretty much your job. Uh, whereas some some of these other characters can do that a little bit better and possibly hit multiple people. So um, that's part of the reason he's bad. His lane is still perfectly fine. I mean, the the fact that you can get totem and you know you don't really have to worry about your mana problems. Um, you can secure blue buffs pretty easily as Karakin. You do a ton of damage, and you're still really good in the one v one. So that's why I think Karakin's a little bit underrated right now. Um, Kamazots, I'll throw in like B. Kamazots is like one of these gods that wins lane really easily just because he has so much sustain and damage. But when it comes to team fights, he drops off so hard. He's one of the hardest dropping off characters coming from solo. Um, because if you're not building like full damage on him, then he doesn't really have a purpose because all he does is damage. So if you're building like Bruiser on him and you come to a team fight and don't affect it at all as far as like CC or initiation or anything like that, um, then it's going to be rough. Unless you get really far ahead. So that's why I think Kama is still like can be played and that's why I put him in B. Maybe B plus just because this is more about ranked. Um, if it's more about ranked, I'll throw him in B plus just because he can win lane pretty easily. And you can still carry the game if you go like transcendence on him and stuff. Uh, Service, I'll throw in A. Service is just one of those gods that is, I think is pretty balanced right now because um, he does a ton of damage. He's really easy to play in lane. He can't really lose lane unless you're um, uh, playing into like King Arthur or just one of these like crazy matchups. Um, but yeah, he gets sustained from the god he's playing against, so that's really nice. And you can't really go wrong with picking him. Um, you can if you're me because I hate him and I am terrible at him, but that's just me, so I'm not going to really pick him. But he's just one of those balanced gods that you can pretty much play every game. And that's why I throw him in A. Uh, Chalk up next. I think Chalk's a bit underrated as well right now. I'll throw him in B+. His attack speed reduction is really nice. Um, he's one of those guys that falls off pretty hard late game, but you can still make really good good use of three-second silence late game. Um, that's the only reason I would say that he is probably B+, and doesn't fall off as much as some other characters just because of the attack speed reduction, reduction plus the three-second silence. Also, it's a long CC uh, immunity duration in his ult, so um, you can pick Chalk to kind of just like survive against, say, a, a frontline killing comp. Um, that has like attack speed in there like maybe they have like i don't know merc baka or something in their jungle plus like two adcs and you just like really want to survive and you have to be a physical then chalk's probably like one of the more priority picks in that situation and ranked um chango i'll throw in a chango can still really hard carry games especially in ranked with her healing she doesn't have a lot of bad matchups in lane um you have kind of like crazy options as far as your build path you can go mage blessing you can like rush boots you can go warrior's blessing or guardian's blessing if you feel like you're gonna get poked out or maybe not be able to last hit minions um, and then Chango is one of her biggest strengths is that she can't, or not she can't, but she doesn't have to go teleport and she can just go an actual active and she can just buy her uh, power spikes from lane. That's really nice. Um, move on, pass all these hunters. There's some characters in here that you could play into, like Bastet and Kronos, but I'm not really going to add them just because you don't really see them that often and they're more just for fun or very, very, very niche picks. Colin, I'll throw in B+. Some people are really... Uh, harping on Kukulun thinking he's like one of the worst gods in the game and like the worst warrior. I don't really think that. I still think he has a, a good use and just like pretty much any other warrior, if you do get a lead coming out of solo lane and you, you build correctly, that he can still do a lot in team fights. He definitely has fallen off. Um, there's a lot of matchups, even just like right here already, that defeat him in lane and kind of own him. So um, that's part of the reason he's fallen off a lot. He can't really be that bully that he once was. Um, and you know, if I pick a call when you can pick King Arthur, I guess if King Arthur is banned, which he is pretty much every ranked game, so maybe that's. Nevertheless, um, Kukulun's fallen off quite a bit. Um, and especially with, like, even though King Arthur really relies on, like, Glad Shield, Kukulun does, does as well. He doesn't have to build Glad Shield. Like, he didn't see Benji building Glad Shield at all um, at Worlds last season, but he was just so good at, um, like, getting a lead that he could rush Mystical Mail and just be, like, dominant in team fights. He can't really do that anymore. Um, so you want that Glad Shield power spike item, and once they get anti-heal, Kukulun's really easy to kill, whereas King Arthur can go in the air, like, nonstop. So that's why uh, Glad Shield, he doesn't get countered as hard by the anti-heal into Glad Shield. Uh, Erling should not throw an A. Erling's one of the better warriors and better bullies in lane. Um, he doesn't have the same benefit as Bologna um, in that sense because uh, Bologna has really good clear potential. She can just out-rotate Erling a little bit because Erling takes a little bit uh, more to clear, at least as far as like levels go and getting points into his abilities. I'm going to throw him an A, though, because he can really dominate in lane and bully somebody and get easy solo kills. He's probably one of the better gods in the game at getting solo kills just because he has so much damage and... Um, but I will put him in A just because if you do pick him, you usually want him in jungle because if you go a little bit more damage on him, you can one-shot carries like so easily that uh, you usually want to have him in jungle instead of in solo. Fafnir up next. Throw Fafnir in B. 
Um, I actually think Fafnir, like, if this is just late game, Fafnir would be, like, A+. He's, like, so sick late game, especially if you go, like, a Shogun's Binding. The build I usually go on him is, like, full CDR into Binding plus Shogun's and, like, Gem of Iso, and then you can, like, Soul Reaver, and if you two somebody, they're getting a Gem of Iso passive plus Soul Reaver procs, like, you're just insta-killing things. If you go, like, Frenzy plus your Shogun's, you're going to be killing objectives instantly. You're going to be killing their tanks instantly if you want to go on them. Um, so his late game's insane. It's just it's really hard to get there without getting punished because your clear is so bad. Your trade potential in the lane is really bad, especially if you don't use your ult. So you're gonna be having to use your ult a lot. So you're gonna be um, that's gonna be on cooldown. Um, and his blue buff defense is pretty bad just because it's really hard for him to out secure because you can block his hammer that does a lot of damage. So um, that's why I'll put him in B. And this is ranked after all, so you want to be trying to win lane. Throw Fenrir in B plus, possibly even A. Fenrir is one of those guys that can win lane easy to get solo kills if the enemy doesn't know what they're doing because you can pull them into your tower by Fenrir ulting them um just low cd uh jump damage really nice and then the lifesteal on his two is really really good as well so if you max that second you're going to be pretty uh easy to play in lane just because you have so much sustain and um, power to trade with uh, but he's another one of those gods that if you get it you probably want to play it in like support um over solo because usually um it makes it there's better use for him there just because he can do a lot with the pressure um, and has a lot more kill potential when it comes to like the 2v2 and the fact that they're under leveled. So, um, Freya, I'll throw in here as well. Freya's actually pretty in, pretty good in solo. I'll put her in A. Um, I think the main reason she's good in solo is she's just broken in general because of her kit, you know, how much they've changed it, and the fact that um, it's not really balanced. So, you could pretty much play her in it. I'm pretty sure you could play Freya in every role, even support and ranked, and probably carry with it. Um, you're not going to be a true support in that regard, but she's still just a god that you could play everywhere. So, I'll throw her in A. Um, even though most of these other gods, I'd say, are like are balanced for solo, um, I'm just putting her here because like she could be even like A plus. But the fact that she's just broken and that's part of the reason she's so good there is why I'm putting her there. So I hope that makes sense. Um, Ganesh, I'll throw in C. If you if it was just Ganesh, like for late game, similar to Fafnir, I might put him a little bit higher, maybe B plus, maybe even A, because he does have a good late game coming from solo, just because of the items he can buy and the amount of damage he can do in a team fight with his ultimate. Um, the fact that you can kill frontline really easily, but it's just about getting there. And Ganesh has a really rough time getting there. And um, a little bit better than Factory in the fact that he can defend blue buffs and stuff, but he doesn't have nearly as much damage. And if you whiff your ultimate, uh, especially on like the totem, which I mean, I've never seen anybody whiff their ultimate on a totem as Ganesh. But if you were to do that, you know, you probably aren't as good. Um, Geb. Geb's pretty similar to how he was last season. He's still a pretty good pick. Um, it's just about surviving the laning phase, similar to most Guardians. And um, if you are able to, he's definitely still one of the better late game gods with full CDR and having a shield on such a low cooldown and Odin. But um, keeping in mind for ranked, I'll throw him in A because he's usually a, bit, a, li a little bit better with communication because if you blink on their backline and tell your jungler to go on them, you pretty much get a kill every time. And then you can peel back to your, your carries and shield them and stuff like that. So, um, you know, um, it's obviously going to be a little bit better when it comes to communication and being in comms. Guan Yu, I'm actually going to throw Guan in A+. Plus. Um, Guan, similar to Changa, can carry games with his heals, um, but the, the fact that he doesn't really lose lane now because he can rush Blackthorn, like once you get Blackthorn online as Guan Yu, you're never really going to die. That 450 extra health plus CDR plus the fact that, you know, if you get into mana problems, you're going to have that Blackthorn passive. Um, it just makes him really easy to play in lane, and he can definitely hard carry the games, um, especially with like a, a Runeforge build or just anything like a Bruiser build. He's going to do a lot of damage with his ult, and um, yeah, basically just go full CDR on him, and you'll be chilling when it comes to team fights and the fact that he doesn't really lose lane anymore is really nice. Um, but yeah, for ranked, I would say go on is like A+. Plus. For Hades, I'll throw Hades in like B+. Plus. Hey, pop a smiling face with hard eyes. Good luck this week. Not <laughs> that you need it. Thanks, G-Wiz. Appreciate the five months, man. Welcome back. Um, hard, the way it said that was funny. Hades, I'll throw in B+. Plus. Hades kind of dominates every lane up to level five just because he outclears everyone. Yeah. He outclears everyone so easily, and he has crazy sustain. But once you get past that, he's a lot easier to deal with. Um, he's still definitely a good god, and the, like the recent buffs to his ultimate and stuff make him pretty good in solo. And if you go a few bruiser items, um, you're still gonna be really tanking your ult. So if they don't have a lot of ways to get out of your ult, then you can look to counter pick with Hades and be around B plus, I think. Um, Hebo, I'll throw in here as well. Throw Hebo in B plus. Um, Hebo is a god that you can carry with just because he does so much damage and wins a lot of lanes um, because of the low cooldown is one. I think he's a little bit underrated, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, his his main thing is just damage and going on backlines and killing them. Um, but he doesn't really have a lot of CC, so if you're looking for CC coming out of Solon, you're probably not going to be picking Hebo there. But if you're just trying to do damage and own their backline, then Hebo's probably around B+. Um, Hell, I'll throw in, like, B. Hell's just having 
a pretty hard time getting out of the laning phase. But once you get out of that laning phase, um, you're going to have those heals. But even then, it's a little bit rough on hell just because you're pretty easy target. You're pretty easy to kill. And if they have anti-heal on you and your teammates aren't really playing around you and trying to help you out, then if they single you out, single you out and kill you, you're going to be a free kill. And um, it's going to make the team fight a lot harder. But if you are able to make good use of those heals, she will shoot up to like A probably. Uh, but for now, I'll throw her in B. Spawn here, below, not really. Um, Herc, I'll throw in probably on A. I think Herc's pretty balanced right now. He's seen some recent buffs. Um, you know, if you're a Herc player, he's definitely viable and you can definitely hard carry games with him. Only thing that's really rough with Herc is once they have anti-heal, you're a pretty easy target. Um, so be on the lookout for that. So just try and build items that are gonna help you survive the most, like uh, damage mitigation and maybe some utility passives like Wing Blade and stuff like that, just to keep you alive. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Herc's still a really good god and definitely one of the more tanky warriors you can, uh, you can play, especially if they don't have too much anti-heal. Um, moving on. So Jorm is the newest god. I haven't really played him too much. If I had to guess, I'd throw Jorm in like B. I think he'll have a little bit of use coming out of solo, but I actually think he's a lot better with like a full damage build just because he has a complete damage immunity in his ult. Well, not complete damage. Like if he has a Zeus or a Nuwa ult on him or something like that, a Zeus detonate, like he's still going to take damage from that. But he has immunity frames throughout his entire ultimate. So if you go full damage on him and just like ult throughout a team fight, you're going to be doing a ton of damage without being able to be targeted. So he's untargetable, I guess I should say. Um, but as far as solo goes, I feel, really feel like he doesn't have too much use. Um, the fact that he gets slowed when he gets knocked up is really bad. Like I, I think his passive is like really rough because the fact that you get slowed is like you're such an easy target because you're already so big. Wrong. Hello, friends. Less than three. <laughs> you're already su such a big character with such a big hitbox that um, the fact that you get slowed, you're just so easy to kill. So I think he's gonna be B with a tank build. He's just way too easy to um target out in a team fight. Yo, net gain. Thanks for the ten months. And who was that before? Professor Solar. Thanks for the eight months as well. Welcome back, guys. Appreciate it. Um, but I haven't really played too much of him. Maybe he'll go up a little bit. I'm not really too sure. But for now, we're going to throw him in B. Um, King Arthur, everyone's favorite. King Arthur is S plus or SS pretty much. Um, he wins pretty much every lane. And by pretty much every lane, I mean he wins every lane. Um, Glad Shield is broken on him. You cannot gank him or try and fight him like up to like level 12. He does have a little bit of a counter in team fights just because he has cripples. Um, you can get anti-heal and stuff like that against him but as far as rank goes you're, you're gonna have to literally draft a comp just specifically to um fuck over king arthur you're not really doing that in rank so if you're trying to win every single game and if he's left open it, king arthur is the instant first pick uh pretty much no matter what so do i really need to say more i mean come on it's king arthur everyone knows how bad he's or broken he is um kumba i'll throw in like b um, similar to these low pressure guardians you just have to survive the laning phase with him even then it's not like his his team fight is so insane that like once you survive the laning phase, you just instantly win the, the team fights like some other gods. Um, that's not the case. Like he's nowhere near as good as Geb and when it comes to team fights. But he does have some uh, some good uses and some good counter matchups, and he's really good in the gods that want to dive super hard. Um, but you can peel. But that's why you would usually play him in support because you kind of want to be diving their backline as a slow laner. Um, but he's good into like double ADC and stuff like that because of his attack speed reduction. But he's just not that great, so. Kuzumbo is up next. I think Kuzumbo is probably around A. Um, Kuzumbo can't lose lane. He's just so simple to play, so easy to play in lane. But he has a really good benefit when it comes to team fights because he can dive super, super hard. He's super hard to kill, and he really fucks over crit builds. He really fucks over gods that are going to be doing consistent DPS to him. He can really just block them out and zone them out for a long time. Um, and he does a lot of damage, and people underestimate his damage. So um, if you're able to go like thorns on him and uh, get on their back line, it's, he's probably... One of the most annoying characters to play against for a backliner, in my opinion. I don't really know because I'm usually the one playing Kuzumbo, but I'd say that um, most people would probably think that or agree with that. Uh, moving on. Is there a Nemesis in here? I think Nemesis is probably around B. Um, she has a really good 1v1, but all their stuff is single target. She can dive backline really well and be really hard to kill and get some kills in the process, but again, no CC. Um, all of it's single target and... Um, you basically need a lead in order to be useful with her. So, um, you know, you don't really, that's the problem a lot of times with these guys that need leads to be, in order to be good. Like why take a gamble uh, unless you are for sure that you're going to get a lead in lane and stuff like that. Why take a gamble and try and get a lead when you can pick a guy that will be good regardless of whether you have one or not. Neja, I'll throw in A. Um, Neja seen some nerfs pretty soon, so this may go down, but for now, um, I'd say that Neja's around A. He's a really good soul laner and with the Blackthorn Rush and stuff like that. I think he is pretty simple to play. 
and he's definitely one of the guards that you can come out of soloing hard carrying and uh and ranked just because you can go more bruiser build and one shot their carries and be super hard to kill with um the amount of sustain you have the amount of movement speed you have with your ring toss and possibly the items you build um so if you know how to play an Asia and you play him in solo then you should be chilling it should be pretty easy nike what's her on like b plus nike really isn't all that bad she's just very boring to play that's why i always say on my stream um to people who ask uh, i just think she's really boring she's not very fun but she's still like a definitely like pretty balanced god in my opinion her pass is really nice she apparently has one of the highest win rates in the game which i mean i have some theories about that but i'm not going to get into them today and we'll have to do a podcast or something about that um conspiracy theory style um no but for real uh nike's pretty balanced i think and um she's definitely she's one of the more hard she's one of the harder to kill warriors in the game just because of the massive shield she gets and if you go blackthorn on her her uh, shield skills off her actual maximum hp so uh, Blackthorn adds 450. That is really insane. So, uh, moving on. I mean, you could play. You could probably play like Nox and uh, you, you could even play like Merlin and Solo just because he's such a broken god. I'll throw Nox in here. Just throw in B real quick. Nox definitely viable, but um, don't recommend really picking her if you're trying to win ranked games. Odin. Hmm. Probably throw Odin in B plus. Uh. He can still counter a lot of people. He recently got some weird changes to his ult, and it was a pretty big nerf to him just because it lasts four seconds at rank one now. And usually you didn't have to put um, points to that before, but now he lost the attack speed reduction and some of the duration during it. So that's pretty rough. I don't know if... They, did they actually revert that? I'm not really sure. But anyway, I would just put him in B+. Pretty balanced character. Really good into characters that can't get out of his cage, obviously. Um, but just doesn't have the greatest uh, of matchups. You can definitely get away with playing him into bad matchups if you know how to play him. Um... But for ranked, you kind of want to be winning lane, and Odin doesn't really win lane. Osiris. I honestly think Osiris is underrated, and as far as rank goes, I'm going to put him in A. He's still one of the big lane bullies. Um, it's very, very hard to outpoke and outtrade an Osiris, uh, especially if they make good use of their passive and auto cancels and stuff like that. Um, late game, he's he's really rough. He doesn't really do a whole lot unless you have like Anemian Thorns. That's going to be the main way that you can contribute in a late game team fight. Is the fact that you dive their their back line and make them kill themselves on you, or just zone them out long enough that maybe you get something off it. But that's really all he's going to do late game. Um, coming out of soloing with the tank build. But if you get ahead with a lead, um, well, obviously this, that's kind of redundant. But if you get a lead in soul lane and you come out of the, the lane with that, um, you're going to be one of the better gods to play because you can one v one pretty much every character in the game. So. Um, and he is pretty easy to get a lead on just because he has such insane lane bully potential. I notice there's a lot of gods in A, B plus, and B. There's kind of troll. That's just how Solene is. It's been like that. I mean, it's very matchup dependent, and um, there's a lot of things that are viable. I've been saying that for like a year now, just of how the meta is. So, um, yeah, yeah. Continuing on. Pele, 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 Pele. I actually really like Pele, and, and ranked. I'll put her in A. Um, she's seen a lot of nerfs recently. She dropped off in the jungle a bit, but she can still uh, hard carry. She can still dive the backline really well and be very hard to kill and do a ton of damage. Um, and I honestly, like, she's just a fun pick, so I'm going to put her in A. Um, but one of the better assassins in solo, in my opinion, because of her sustain and her crazy damage potential. And she can farm really well. If you go to Larry Boots on Pele and just, like, use your three to get to jungle camps and stuff like that, you can definitely farm, like, a madman, so, or a mad woman, mad goddess. Anyway, Rat up next. I'll throw Rat in B+. I think Rat might be a little bit underrated as well just because his farm potential is insane. Um, his kill potential in lane is insane because he can rush that acorn and get the 50 power really early on. So if you're a solo laner and paying attention, boom, you get a kill like that and you can start snowballing. Um, he has really good proxy and rotation potential because it was all if he ever gets ganked, he can just ult out and it's a big waste of time for the enemy jungle. So I'd say he's pretty underrated and his laning phase is super simple with Warrior's Blessing. You kind of just walk up, hit the enemy solo, group up the minions to it, and then auto AoE auto it and you're full clearing before a lot of people. So you should be able to get totem pretty easily. Um, so I think he's a little bit underrated. I'll put him in B plus for now. Don't be, wouldn't be surprised if he went up to like A or A plus for ranked, um, he does fall off a, uh, quite a bit late game, so you got to keep that in mind. His damage drops off a lot, so that's part of the reason he's probably not played as much. But um, Robin is probably like BB plus. I think he makes uh, is a lot better with a damage build, but he's very very hard to kill still. Like ever since his release, Robin's been really hard to kill because of his two immunities, um, as far as his ult and his two go. Um, but it's all single target at the end of the day. Why pick a god that has single target and requires lead to be useful when you can pick gods that 
are good from behind and from ahead and have a lot more AoE and, uh, you know, just like CC potential and stuff like that. Um, continuing on, Sir Ket. I'll throw Sir Ket in like B+. Plus. Um, I actually really like Sir Ket. I think she's really fun in solo and she's really good with the tank build. So that's why she's probably a little bit higher than you would think. Maybe you'd see her in like C or B on some people's tier list. But she's really good with the tank build, to be honest. Um, she still does a ton of damage as far as true damage and a percent damage on her one or stuff like that. Um, so that's why I throw in B+. Plus. Does have a rough laning phase. Her clear is really rough. Uh, but she has a lot of 1v1 potential just because she has so much damage like I talked about before. And um, the anti-heal is really nice into certain matchups. So Sobek. I'll throw in A. Sobek's just one of the more balanced gods probably. Um, it is ranked, so maybe you drop, see him drop off a little bit. But if you don't really know what you're doing, this is like an overall general tier list for solo laners. If you're like bidding, being stuck in solo and you don't really know what to play, you can play Sobek. You'll have the easiest laning phase ever. You'll be useful in team fights as long as you hit your buttons. Like, you click your buttons, you probably hit them. Um, and, yeah, he's just like a standard god that you can't really go wrong with picking. Plus, he's a crocodile, so that's an added bonus. Uh, Wukong, I'll throw an A+. Plus. Wukong's farm potential is insane right now. He can have a lot of different starts. He can go Soul Eater. He can go Mage's Blessing and then go into Soul Eater after that. He doesn't even have to go Soul Eater. You can go, like, Glad Shield plus, like, a tank build. Um, you can go Warrior's Blessing and then all easily proc your Warriors Blessing stacks just because you can cuddle them from so far away. Um, so he has a lot of uh, potential and um, in ranked, you could pick him pretty much every game and be happy with it. Um, there's a couple matchups you might have a rough time with, like Achilles and stuff like that, but if you just learn how to play them and learn how to play a little bit passive early game against those, you should be fine and you should still be really useful in team fights. One of the better Warriors, for sure. Uh, Susano, I'll throw in like A, probably A, B+. Plus. Honestly, for ranked, I mean, you see like a lot of people in uh, like high level ranked playing Susana, like Haddix and uh, Slither Troll. He's really, really good and he's really simple to play in lane. Um, all of his abilities do damage, so Glad Shield is really nice on him. He gets a lot of sustain from that. Um, his auto cancels are really nice, um, just increases DPS by so much. So, honestly, for ranked, I'll throw him in A, but if it was taking more into competitive side of things, I'd probably lower him a little bit just because um, when it gets towards like the late game, he's going to be pretty useless. Um, because he drops off a lot so maybe i'll throw him in like a or like in between a and b plus like an a minus or something like that i wish this had more like options because it's just getting stacked in the middle but that's just how it should be honestly in solo because solo is a pretty balanced role right now in my opinion um could throw sylvanas in here i'll throw sylvanas in b and not explain it just so you guys can be appeased throw out Terran a plus um, Terra's still really, really good. Um, she does everything you need a solo laner to do. She has sustain, she has tons of damage, she has CC, she has a simple laning phase, she has really good blue buff defense because of her crazy amount of damage on her shatter um, and the fact that she, it can stun as well. Um, like, do I need to say more? She's pretty much got everything going for her. Only reason you probably wouldn't see her higher is that she can be countered by anti heal, she can be countered by cripples. Um, cripples hard counter her and make her an easy target. Um, even her passive is really nice though, like the slow plus the knockoff immunity. Um, so you can look to counterpick with that, but at the end of the day, you don't even really have to. You can just pick Terra and be happy with it pretty much most games. Um, definitely want to know how to play her, though. You need to learn how to dive a backline as Terra. It's pretty simple. You blink on them, you ult, then you use your abilities on them, and they're dead. But if you can do that perfectly, then um, she's probably one of the best Guardians you could play in ranked. Thanatos. See, the thing with Thanatos is he's one of the solo picks that can instantly win a game like get a, a level three kill level two kill and then he'll be able to dominate the lane for the rest of the game um just because he has so much sustain and uh, damage potential and he's good with a, a bruiser build but if you're playing against a good player or at least a character that's or a player that's good as you or a character that just can't die like any of these guardians or maybe even some of these warriors like Vaughn and stuff um if you're playing against any of those then it's gonna be really hard for you to get that lead and you're gonna be a lot less useful from behind so that's why Tentus is around b just because it's a lot less likely for you to get that lead unless you're completely dominating the lane which in that case if you're completely dominating the lane you probably could do it on a plenty of these characters here because you're probably against a character or a player that's not that great i don't know why i keep saying that morgan I actually throw in solo because she's actually pretty good with the tank build for one um because she can initiate and not be uh able to be killed just because she has a tank build um but also her lane is really good she has a lot of range she can poke people from range she can clear from range and be pretty safe especially against characters that are bullies like melee characters um so and she also has a lot of clear potential so she can get the totem pretty easily more of a, a pick that you you know you have to practice and be good with morgan transformations be able to use her transformations uh correctly 
but um, as far as her like max skill potential, uh, I'll throw her in like B plus. Moving on, we got Thor, God of Thunder, S S Psych. Um, th I'll throw Thor in B. He's really not that good. Um, I actually, I mean, I love Thor as a character. I always say this, but um, he just needs something right now. Um, he's too risky to play. You could play a plethora of other assassins and have so much more leeway as far as um, making mistakes and still being very useful. You have to play everything. Per we always say this: like you have to play everything perfect as Thor. And even then, if you play everything perfect as Thor, and I mean like really perfect, you're like you're like a pretty good god. Like you're a good god. Whereas if you play everything perfect on like, um, this is for jungle. So like if you play everything perfect on like Neja or like Erling, you're you're killing one to two people in team fights, and you, you're going to be super. Super simple to play and super easy to play as well, and um, not really have too much threat as far as dying and stuff. Like his main form of damage in his one um, is his escape as well, so that's really rough. And his ult is actually really hard to hit. I mean, people always people always roasting people for um, not hitting Thor, ult, but I've played Thor for like four years or no, wait, how long have I been playing Smite? Like five or six years. I've been playing him since he's been my favorite guy the entire time, and his ult has always been hard, unless they're already CC'd or like they don't know it's coming, and even then it's still uh, pretty difficult to hit. Um, I mean, if you just look at all the other characters in the game and look at their abilities compared to Thor ult, you'd be like, okay, well, maybe this maybe this uh, ultimate is a little bit hard to hit. I think people kind of underestimate that. <laughs> anyway, next up we have Tyr. Tyr is in D because I hate Tyr and he only has one arm. Uh, not that, you know, not that just because you have one arm, like, I hate you. That's not what I mean, you know what I mean? Okay. Um, Fumana up next. No, seriously, Tyr's like, Tyr's like B. It's really, <laughs> it's really easy for uh, Tier to just like stalemate a lane, um, but there's a lot of things with knockup immunity for one in the game right now. Um, it's really hard for me to actually like full on kill a backline. There's so many other characters that can do it on their own, and Tier is not really good at that. Um, so the really only thing that you have, he has going for him is really hard to kill. But once they have anti heal, he's gonna be a lot easier to kill. And there's plenty of matchups that can actually do pretty uh, well into him in lane as far as I mean if we just look at some of these top characters right now they kind of own him so why pick a guy that's potentially going to lose lane and not really contribute a lot why not just pick a guy that can lose lane and still be useful like a guardian or like some of these other uh, better scaling warriors and then like what if somebody picks tier and you just pick Wanyu you're like you're the happiest person in the world right so sorry that was my phone um yeah 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 anyway Vamana up next I'll throw Vamana in A plus potentially S Mana is one of the better solo laners. He is seeing some nerfs soon. We'll see how much that actually affects him. They're definitely like the base damage nerfs are pretty important as far as solo goes, just because you build more tanky on him. But since it's ranked, if you go Hasten Katana and you ult as Vamana, you're going to be one of the best characters coming from solo to actually carry a game, just because you're going to be so hard to kill and you're going to do a billion damage. So, um, oh my goodness, my phone is going off. I'm sorry. Anyway, so yeah, Vamana's like around S, just so hard for a backline to deal with in ranked um so yeah moving on we got jing ten with we'll a jing ten and d they should just re-kit jing ten honestly worst god in the game by far not even close uh ymir we'll throw in d ymir is obviously better than these gods in my opinion he can win lane pretty easily and um if you make really good use of your wall and you can use it correctly then um he's gonna be very very useful and if you go like a movement speed build he's actually pretty hard to kill with like wing blade and boombas and then like the rest of your build is tank he's actually pretty hard to kill because he's just so fast he can get around his wall and maneuver his wall um to his advantage and stuff like that so i'll throw him in b but at the end of the day ymir is ymir he doesn't do a ton of damage late game um he's still a pretty easy target if you cc him at all you get a cc on him and then he just can't move and he's a big target and you just kind of blow him up pretty much and he relies on his blink too much in order to initiate unless he can get a good wall um so usually you're going to be picking him later on see if you can get a good use of your your wall in that uh scenario and then jong i'll throw an a jong in ranked is still one of the better characters to to carry from especially in the mage department he's probably on the same level as a lot of these characters in here um but you do want to get that lead on him because if you get behind on Zhang and go into these team fights, you're going to be a pretty easy target to single out, especially if you like blink on them or just like go walk in and use your ult. Um, they may be able to single you out before you're able to get enough damage off or anything like that. So definitely want to be able to get a lead on him. But he does have a pretty easy and simple route to getting a lead as far as the link goes. So 
Um, and he has a crazy amount of sustain, so he wins a lot of matchups and just does a ton of damage. And all of his abilities do damage, which is really nice on him. So if you go stuff like Spear and then like Gem of Iso, then you're going to be pretty um, useful in the team fights as far as like CC and just being a really annoying character to deal with. So um, that's it. That's pretty much it. That should be most of the uh, viable solo and gods. Some of these other characters are probably somewhat viable in solo. You just won't see it that often. And I don't think there's a point in talking about it too much. And I'm not saying that you can't play any of these characters in solo. You definitely can. But most of the time, they aren't really filling the role of the solo laner. Um, because all these characters can kind of build tank and still be really useful. That's the, the beauty of all of these characters. And that's why I think they're the viable gods in solo. So, yep, that's pretty much it. Um, for example, like, so just to go off what I just said, like Anubis, like you could probably play in solo, like you throw him in, maybe you throw him in like B or B plus, but in order to be useful as Anubis, you're going to have to build full damage and that's not really the role of a solo laner. So why are you building that when you, you know, you're probably going to have to have a jungler who's going full tank in order for you to be Anubis solo with full damage. So that's just something that requires too much play around. So, um, and this is mainly for ranked, right? So just talking about the gods that are by one rank. So anyway, that is pretty much it. I guess I can throw Hera in as well. I'll throw Hera in like C. I think Hera with a tank build is actually one of the better gods late game. She's probably like A when it comes to late game, but it's just about getting there. She does. She has such a hard time early game because she has terrible clear. Um, you pretty much have to go Guardian's Blessing on her, and she is a really easy kill when it comes to like blue buffs and stuff just because, I mean, she's already a pretty immobile god with no CC immunity. So if you throw in a uh, like a, a bully into that it's gonna be really hard for you to be useful but um if you can't get to late game and say you're like a harem and you just love the god and you're you know how to play her perfectly in lane and you know every single matchup on her then maybe you can throw her a little bit higher like maybe bb plus uh, but for the most part i'd say she's on the lower end but she is fun to play in solo i think she's fun to try to try to make to make work um because of the full cdr plus like bruiser build with her it's just really nice because then you have like a tanky hera plus tanky argus so <clears throat> Loki D, Unbats B, throwing these in here, and Ryzen with a full CDR build is B, because he's fun. But that's pretty much it. Um, Mediocre Pixel with the nine months, thanks man, and Vista Kid with the seven months of Twitch, Brian. Thank you both. Welcome back, guys. Appreciate it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's look at all these. This is what I was talking about before, though. This is just how the season has been, um, season six, and probably the rest of the season unless things a lot of things change um hopefully we'll see some changes and maybe we'll mix it up but as far as season five goes in the beginning of season six there's a lot of stuff viable and so especially in ranked where you're going to be able to get away with a lot of things and just kind of play what's ever whatever is comfortable for you there's definitely some more priority picks that will give you a better chance at winning such as these guys that i've listed up here and possibly even this guy like if he's let through but he probably won't be let through um and honestly he's not even that good so we'll throw him back down in d but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this tier list video. Um, if you have any questions or maybe you feel like I'm an idiot and you think things should be in different spots, then you can go ahead and let me know. Um, I'll read the comment. I promise I'll read it. I don't know if I'll actually, you know, care about it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave your questions below. Feel free to subscribe if you want more soul and content for Season 6. And yeah, peace out.